All right, it is Thursday night, and that means it is CD Review Show. All right, we got two really good CDs we're uh, doing releasing tonight, and one of them is by this Kelly Nelson, and the other one is, um, <laughs> oh, excuse me, I got it. Hair my throat. The other one is Glory Bound Travelers. And at the end of this, uh, those two, uh, we'll be having our uh, sermon by Pastor Mike Perky. Uh, and the uh, sermon is called The Battle. But as we do every time we do a CD release party, we always find one uh, song uh, outside of the two CDs to start the show off. And tonight I picked a good friend of mine. Uh, who's fixing to be uh, moving at the uh, first of the year up to Nashville, Tennessee. And, uh, matter of fact, uh, when I was doing a secular radio show, I kept playing some of his music and just thinking it was strictly country music and started really listening to the words. And uh, he helped me uh, cross back over and to give my life back to uh, the Lord Jesus uh, and I'd like to thank him uh, personally right now and that's uh, Mr. Marty Ray God bless you my friend and this song is uh, by the Marty Ray project this is Streets of Gold There's gonna be time
amen, 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 amen. <laughs> Thank you, Marty. Thank you so much, my brother. All right, let's get started with the uh, first CD of the night, and it's by Miss Kelly Nelson. And this song is Be Still. Still, I know that you 
I'll stay on the path straight and true. I'm gonna fly with the angels on high through heaven's gates, cross God's blue sky.
it and swapped in Like he lost his best friend The look on his face said I just sold my soul and Then drinking wine and talking Was Bart, Pete and Jim The whole room fell silent As he came walking in Gathered there, not an empty chair At a table for thirteen an inspiration for the last supper scene As they broke the bread and drank the wine You said, remember me I'll be crucified, he prophesied at a table for thirteen The conversation got real heavy He said, one here will betray me The table got so quiet you could hear each breath And they sat there like brothers Whispering to each other Eleven were heartbroken But one was scared to death Pete said, is in me, Lord? With tears in his eyes He said, no, but before the rooster crows You'll deny me three times chair at a table for thirteen, an inspiration for the last supper scene. As they broke the bread and drank the wine, he said, remember me, I'll be crucified, he prophesied at a table for I 
fortune And I don't need fame I don't really care If anyone ever knows my name takes care of me and he's all I need when that time will come and I cross that river when my life here is done and I fought the battle the victory's been won he's all I I don't need silver Every day, he'd say. 
so good to me. You give me everything I ever wanted. A good life and a loving family. You're worthy of more praise than I can give you. I just had to come down here and say. How I want my day to start here with you, Lord. You always see me through. I'll sing your praises all day long. You lift me up and make me strong. I don't understand how your love never ends. Give me. So far that y'all are enjoying this CD as much as I am, we're going to keep moving on with Call On Me. There's a place in me that's broken and aching deep within. My soul is feeling better and my teardrops will not.
just about as vain as I could be. So full of pride and self righteous. Then one day a wise man said to me, You're just one cross away from heaven. One cross away from the truth. One cross away from forgiveness. One cross away, it's up to you. He told me about a man in the Bible. Friend hanging there to cross his over Said repent and you can find relief You're just one cross away from heaven One cross away from the truth One cross away from forgiveness One cross away, it's up to you Prosperous and good, but he was lost. Jesus said, There's just one thing you're lacking. Sell it all and come pick up the cross. You just one cross away from heaven. One cross away from truth. One cross away from forgiveness. One cross away, it's up to you. Penalty was paid by Jesus Christ. You're just one cross away from heaven, one cross away from the truth, one cross away from forgiveness, one cross away, it's up to you. You're just one cross away, it's up to you. Amen and amen and amen. All right, here comes the bonus uh, track off to the CD, and it's with special guest. Um, can't get it to go over there. What's wrong with you? <laughs> All right, uh, I didn't want to act right there from it. This is uh, Heaven's Jubilee with special guest uh, Wayne Taylor. And if you'd like to be able to contact uh, Kelly Nelson to be able to get this awesome CD, you can do so by contacting her at www.kellynelsonmusic.com. God bless uh, and enjoy this last song for this CD. shall see Jesus in the air coming after you and me joy is ours to share what rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise headed for that jubilee yonder in the sky oh what singing oh what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise oh what glory Savior in the sky. And with all the heavenly host, we begin to sing.
Sweet loving Jesus. That is Kelly Nelson, and the CD is called In the Waiting. That's 13 songs on there. It's 12 plus the bonus track, Heaven's Jubilee, with special guest Wayne Taylor. Make sure you pick you up a copy of that today. Coming up next, we have Glory Bound Travelers. And uh, the CD is uh, Jesus Saved My Soul. And this is in memory of good, their good friend, Chris Richards, who had helped them along the way. And I'm brought to uh, bring this up, that inside the uh, CD, um, there's a uh, verse in here that I might as well read to y'all, since it, they put it in here for a reason. And <laughs> I guess that reason's for everybody to hear it. And that is... That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10 and 9. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is Glory Bound Travelers. And uh, the first song we're going to do out of them is Sinners Saved by Grace.
I was down on the bottom Oh, my hope was almost gone I couldn't find a reason to keep on a carrying on I tossed and turned in my bed I couldn't get much sleep Till the Holy Ghost took control And I fell down on my knees This is what happened Jesus saved my soul Saving my soul And from pulling me from the bottom Now my life he has full control He changed the way that I walk way that I talk I'm no longer confused I find peace and comfort in his word And I know he's gonna see me through Jesus saved my soul
vers grand The doctor called him in one day And he said, son If you don't quit, you won't be here at all So I got with the family We all begin to pray. Now he sings and writes songs for Jesus. And if you ask him, he'll gladly tell you how God changed him that day.
take my flight. I'm a going someday.
Amen, amen, amen. Not to take anything out away from uh, Glory Bound Travelers at all. At all. <laughs> My God, this is a wonderful band. But uh, if that song right there did, 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 did not just reach out and just touch you, you must have been listening to something else. I <laughs> praise God. That right there was just awesome. That was shout about it. All right, come on. Next is uh, Saving Me. Same band, same place. Glory Bound Travelers. <laughs> Jesus, I feel your light when I sing you songs of praise. Oh, now, Jesus, I want to thank you for sending me your grace. I am a sinner, and you are perfect, and I love you for loving me. I'm very boring, but you send me soaring when I call out your name. Lord, sometimes I cry, cause I don't know why you came to save me. Your love and mercy is my cure for loneliness, and I just want to praise you for saving me. For saving me Oh now Jesus I need forgiveness Cause try as I may Oh now Jesus I fall short of your glory Every day Though I may waste away I am renewed each day Through be fighting Satan's army till Jesus calls me above. Lord, sometimes I cry cause I don't know why you came to save me. You love and mercy is my cure for loneliness and I just want to praise you for saving me. Saving me
I'm not much of anything Just a simple man Hard work, sweat and blood I do the best I can But for a man to lay down his life For me It brings big old tears to my eyes Thank you, Jesus For setting me free And I will stay The price you paid opened the gate to the home I long to see. If I can hold the road steady and slow and lead a soul to you, your guiding hand is all I need. Till my work here pulls through.
judge me by the mistakes that I've made. I came from a broken road, but straight and narrow is the way. When Jesus came into my heart, oh, change was done. I was his lost sheep and I'm thankful he found this one. Cause I got a mansion where I call home. There's gates of pearl there and streets of gold. Oh, the king's my father. He's a great I am. My robe's been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, now I got All right, here is the last song for this uh, CD, Jesus Save My Soul by the Glory of Travelers. And the song is uh, appropriately put on the, for the last song of the CD since it is the altar call song. This is Glory Bound Travelers. You came to church this morning. Like you've done so many times before You're hoping you don't get that feeling You had the Sunday before Your heart is probably pounding And you don't want to give in The Holy Ghost is now moving and he is calling you in Just slip out and walk on down And let it all go Ask the Lord to give you of your sins And save your soul You may never get another Sunday Today just might be the end Come on home, Jesus is waiting And He is calling you in Oh, I love the man called Jesus that bled and died on the cross He hung there for your sins And to save the ones that was lost He is the beginning And I know He's the end you never find no other Dear friend Just slip out and walk on down and let it all go. Ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins and save your soul. You may never get another Sunday. Today just might be the end. Come on home, Jesus is waiting And He is calling you in Come on home, Jesus is waiting And He is calling you home
praise the great almighty amen i'd like to thank both of these great uh, artists for sending in their cds to the wbur believers underground radio and that's kelly nelson in the waiting and glory bound travelers jesus saved my soul uh, if you'd like to get uh, the Glory Bound Travelers CD, you can go to www.glorybundtravelers.com and Kelly's is www.kellynelsonmusic.com and I'm sure that they'd be able to help you to get your CD today. God bless you. Now let's move on. Uh, we've got our sermon coming up. It's called The Battle and this is Pastor Mike Perky. Well, praise the Lord. Let's go quickly in the Word of God to Joshua chapter 5. I want to talk about the battle. The battle, the battle, the battle, because everybody's in some kind of a battle. And let's talk about it for a few moments this morning and let you know that that wall can move for you. Whatever you're into is temporary. God's going to bring you through it. It's not over, and, and, and you're, not, you're not just going to stay where you're at from here on out. You're not going to have to keep fighting the same thing. We're going to move it today in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. Joshua 3, uh, excuse me, Joshua 5 and verse 13 but Joshua 5 and 13, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite of him with his sword drawn in his hand. Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you with us or are you for our adversaries? So he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandals off of your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Father, thank you for the victory we have. We are not moved by circumstances and all the stuff that's around us. We're moved by the word and the power of the word. We're, we know that God, through you, we can do all things. And that uh, you being in us is greater than anything that the world can throw at us. And we praise you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Here for a few moments, let me say something about this little word. Joshua is not a person that procrastinates a lot. I mean, Joshua's a guy that's ready to go after at any time. He's an aggressive person. Joshua is a warrior. And uh, I've heard preaching and teaching on us being the, there's some, I think some books out on the Joshua generation. And he is tenacious. And, and you cannot lead into greatness if you have a small mindset. You cannot go forward with your feelings on your sleeves. You have to be able to feel uh, your emotions, uh, but still be able to control them so that you're moving and putting your energy in the right places. Watch me. Thankfully, God doesn't just mentor followers he also mentors leaders and helps you to develop your skill so you can be more adapt to what God is going to do, what he's going to do in your life. God's ready to do something in your life today. God's ready to move you forward and put you in some great places. Joshua would fight at the drop of a hat. Let's just be honest for a moment. Many people, maybe in this room, would have a tendency to go to war in just a moment, in a flash. That is not a bad thing because God can use you in that kind of personality. Uh, and you don't want to kill that, uh, but you've got to be able to control it. You've got to be able to control your aggressiveness. You've got to be able to control uh, that warrior spirit that's on the inside. Or you're just out killing everybody and killing stuff that could help you. I mean, the people that God sends along to help you, you're killing them, man. Joshua's getting ready to take on the biggest battle of his life. 
And he has all the tendencies that come from being in a lot of series of battles. The problem is when he looks up and sees a man standing by him, he says, are you with me? First of all, it wasn't a man, it was God. He didn't even realize that God was standing there. I mean, he's just all up and, you know, all into this thing. He says, hey, hey, yeah, you. Are you with me? Uh, see, have you recognized God is there in your situation? Are you so practical and do you get so busy dealing with man and dealing with some situations that you don't know that there is a spiritual dynamic to really winning? You have to do something in order to win. Stay with me. Because faith without works is dead being alone. Now listen to me. When God gets in the midst of all of your goals and your desires and the things that you're going after, it helps you to be more effective when God gets involved. How many knows that? It helps you. The hardest thing in the world to do is to balance between what is my responsibility and what is God's responsibility. What's my part in bringing down this wall and what's God's part in bringing down this wall? Some of you in this house today have got some walls before you. You need to get into the place to where God's answers are and your victories are and what you're believing God to do, but there's some walls up and it's keeping you out and away from God's best. Sometimes God will speak to you through people that you would never think it would be possible. So they have a Moses mentality of wandering around a mountain that is safe rather than have a contemporary ongoing experience with God. Watch this now. You have to face new things. You have to face new situations to have a prayer life. You have to face something that makes you vulnerable and insecure to have a prayer life. You have to come before God not being a know-it-all to have a prayer life. Stay with me. How many today are facing some new challenges? I am. I'm facing some new things today. I'm facing things today that I have not faced in my ministry before. In 39 years of ministry, thank God, I'm so thankful the Lord's kept me and God's helped me and God's been with me. God stood by me and, and all that. I think most of us here would know, man, we're facing some different things today than we faced back uh, five years ago or 10 years ago. We're facing a different devil. We're facing a different intellect and situation and, 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 and all, all of that. And, and so, therefore, new challenges sometimes are a sign of progress. It is a sign of going into another dimension. And so Joshua, yeah, he was going to fight. He was aggressive. He would run up on God and said, God, are you with me or are you against me? He's so aggressive that he's asking God, are you on my side or are you on the side of the enemy? Stay with me. In other words, he said, if you want to be with me, you got to choose a side. Because I can't get through this and tackle this and deal with this unless I know you're on my side. And I can't know you're on my side unless I've got some intimacy with you. I can't know you're for me unless I have a real experience with you. People want God to take a side. They, uh, like, are you with me? Or, or, or are you with uh, uh, my adversaries. Uh, most of us who embrace faith from such sometimes a selfish perspective that all we want to know is how can we use God to promote what we're doing. Are you with me or are you against me? And the Lord said neither. It's not about him being for you. It's about you being for the Lord. I can't get no help yet. It's not about him being for you. It's about you 
being for the Lord. It is not about how you can get God to support your agenda. It is about you getting on your knees and finding out what is God's agenda and then seeing how you can support what God is doing. I got how God how you how how you going to fight this thing? Not how am I going to do it? How am I going to get people to help me? How no God, what are you going to do with my situation? So we can go to Exodus chapter 17 and verse number 8. Go to Exodus 17 for a moment, verse number 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in, Rephi, in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose us out men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I'm going to stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. All right. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him. Many of you know this story. And he fought with Amalek. And Moses... Aaron and her went up on the top of the hill. And then it came to pass when Moses, when Moses uh, would hold up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Watch, stay with me here a moment. This is all working to where I'm going here in a moment. I'm going to help us. Here's my issue. Joshua's down fighting. Joshua is winning. But he doesn't know that he is winning because Moses is up on the hill holding up his hands. So some of you are maybe today thinking you're winning because you're such a great fighter. And you've got it so much together. But you're not winning because really you're such a good fighter. You're winning because there's somebody that's praying for you. You're, you're not ahead because you're something special. You're ahead because somebody's holding you up. There's a mama somewhere. There's a dad somewhere. There's a pastor somewhere. There's somebody somewhere, a grandma, a grandpa. There's somebody somewhere that is praying for you, causing you to prevail over your enemies. I'll tell you this. I already have hit up a lady at our church this morning. She's here right now. She knows who she is. And I went up to her this morning and we were talking a little bit about prayer and things. And I told her as strongly and as straight as I could tell her, please hold me up in your prayers. Now you might say, well, pastor, you, you'd tell all of us that. Yes, I would. And I know many of you are praying for me. I know this lady and I know her prayers. I know her tenacity. I know her walk. I know her daily walk. I know all about what she's about. And I just have a lot of confidence knowing that every morning when she's taking her communion, I'm there with her. It lets me feel like that mouse that came out, as I said before, of the whiskey bottle and got on both hind legs and said, where is the cat? <laughs> I feel invincible. In other words, no, because I know it's not about me. I know there's something happening in somebody's prayer that I've got some covering. I got to have a covering. I got to have a covering from some men and some women and some warriors that I'm not out here trying to do it by myself. Can I get any help here? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, so if we're not careful, we're running around trying to be tough and fight in our own strength. And it was not your works alone. The Bible says, lest any man should boast. It's the balance between the sacred and the secular that's so important. It's between the faith and works. We got to have works. We got to get out and work. We got to do something. We got to press forward. A lot of times folks don't want to be told they got to work. Well, I mean, you know, I mean you're really, I'm, and I'm, I'm talking about in the, in the natural or in the spiritual. We had somebody leave the church the other day because they called up and Talked to Pastor Todd and, and, you know, wanted a whole lot of money. And Pastor Todd, in, a, in as gentle, uh, he handles these things for us, but in a gentle, nice way, 
told this lady, uh, you know, your husband needs to work. <laughs> this booger is getting up at 11 o'clock. You're supporting him. And, 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 and he didn't say it like that. I, I didn't know. <laughs> That's if you call me. <laughs> yeah, right, baby. That's why I have these men are buffeting men. <laughs> yes, sir. Because you call me, I'd say, you need to tell that sorry uh, <laughs> to get up at 11 o'clock and get his behind out and go to work and, and quit supporting and quit making excuses for that lazy bum. That's if you call me. But, but, but people don't want to be told that, that I got to I got to put out some, some work. You have to work, but then you, you have to do also put faith within that work. In other words, you can shout to those walls and walk around those walls that they got, as Joshua did later on here, at, that they got to come down. You got to shout. You got to believe God, but you got to be marching while you're shouting. You got to be speaking while you're marching. You got to be declaring while you're marching. Oh, hallelujah. You got to be uh, active while you're moving around that thing. You got to, yeah, you're, you're, you're walking, you're moving in faith, but you're moving in work and faith. And Joshua has a lot of confidence. He's, he's many times uh, too aggressive and he will go in and he'll fight man just in a minute. And when you get like this, you fight away people sometimes who love you. You fight away help that God sent to sustain you. Sometimes if you're not careful, you fight your own husband, your own parents, your own wife. You're fighting with the people that care about you enough to confront your bad self and tell you how you really are. And you'll fight them because your past has shaped the way you see all of your present stuff. It didn't shape your present it shapes how you see it. I'm moving all through here now. Your perspectives on where you are are based on where you have been. All right, stay with me. Now God now has brought you to a place and he's now starting to demand, demand, demand maturity. I'm not going to win this battle if I don't get some maturity. And there's times we've got to grow up. We've got to, we just, we just can't stay in the stage of lashing out and, and, and all of this. The thing that you are up against right now is not about you. The battle is not yours. It is not you that is getting the victory. It is God that's getting the victory and God's just using you to get the victory. Understand that the battle is not yours. This whole battle that's going on belongs to God. And in order for you and I, I don't, I don't know what your battle is. You know what you're sitting there dealing with and stuff that you're working out, having to work out. Uh, to get the breakthrough, uh, amen, uh, it, you don't run uh, against the enemy before you have an encounter with God. The first thing is I got to have an encounter with God. I got to look to God. I got to know his word. I got to start speaking out by faith, amen. And then I start moving in that thing. I want to operate from a position of of strength and not strain. Some of you have wore yourself out because it's strain. Some of you right now are stressed out and at the breaking point because you're in a battle that you can't get out of and you can't stop and you got to fight the battle and part of you wants to give up because you're tired and you're frustrated and you want to quit. And everybody in here has come at times, if you've served God very long, and things that you're dealing with, you want to just drop it all, and you get frustrated, and you want to quit. But you can't quit because you can't afford the luxury of retreat. <laughs> you have to stand there and arm yourself and fight. There's too much at stake for you to back off. And you humble yourself and say, Lord, I'm here to serve you. And how are you going to get the victory in this situation, God? How, how's it all going to work out? So Joshua is standing there having an encounter with God. I'm just praying today, God, 
somehow that through whatever means we can have an encounter with you. Why are we here this morning? Why are we even showing up here on Sunday morning this morning? Why do we get up, go to church on, on, on the little bit of the weekend uh, kind of that we have? Uh, uh, say, see, if you don't know why you're doing it, then you won't do it very long. I will never see the walls of Jericho come down until I have a real experience with God. I can march and march and march and keep coming to church and keep coming to church and march and keep coming to church uh, and, and I will never see my credit come down, my debt come down, my tumors come down, my crisis come down until I have an encounter with God. Today I'm praying for there to be a start of an encounter with God. I didn't come out here to have an encounter with the ushers or the prayer people, but I came to have an encounter with God. So I'm saying, God, this morning, speak to my heart. Speak to my life. Speak to me through the music. Speak to me through this word. Talk to me. It doesn't matter whether I felt like coming this morning or not. I need this moment. My spirit needs this moment. My flesh didn't want to come. The phone had to stop. The emails had to stop. The things of the world had to slip away. Some of you can't get an encounter because you can't get away from that phone. Eat that phone stuff. Sometimes I got to tell my boys when we go out and eat, put that stupid phone up. Can I get an amen from somebody? I mean, I'm buying this meal. <laughs> and baby, we ain't eating at Sonic. It's costing me some money here. Get out of that phone and talk to me. God, <laughs> and God would love to tell a lot of us, would you please get your head out of that TV, get it out of that phone, get it out of them golf clubs, get it out of that garden, get it out of that boat, get it out of that stuff, and would you talk to me? Because the only way you're going to win is to have an encounter with me, and to have an encounter with me, you got to talk to me. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, talk to me. The things of the world got to slip away. I'm surrounded, you got to say, by the Spirit of the Lord. My spirit needs an encounter with God. And God said, I'm closing, stay with me here. God says, Joshua, you must understand that the ground that you're on is a holy ground. Joshua, now watch, 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 all this working together. Joshua's on the battlefield. He's not in a church. He's not in a prayer meeting. See, you need to understand you don't have to be in church or in a prayer meeting to be on holy ground. You can be in a battle and be on holy ground because it's the ground that you're on that will determine how much ground you take. It's Sholem Okaya. It's the ground that you're on that will determine whether you get the walls to come down. See, seeing holy ground in a crisis, that what, that's what we got to get to. It is what separates greatness from mediocrity is seeing an opportunity for God to reveal himself. Amen. Uh, th and that is what makes a sanctuary a sanctuary is where God can reveal himself. Man, let your battleground be a sanctuary. Let the place that you're fighting some stuff out in life be a sanctuary. Let your home, your bedroom, let, 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 let the school, let the neighborhood, whatever, be a sanctuary. Understand that what you are dealing with right now is a place where God can reveal himself. He may show up in a way you've never seen him before. He may do something you've never seen him do before. But you may have to take off your shoes and take off your preconceived ideas. You may have to get rid of your shoes. You may have to take them off. Get rid of your religious mentality. 
Get rid of religious mentality and get ready for a fresh revelation of who God is in this battle. I got to know who God is in this battle. I got to know who God is right in the midst of my trouble. Show me who you are. Tell me, let me know how big you are. Let me know how far I can go. Are you with me? Am I going to take this? Am I going to get the victory? In other words, I took off my shoes. He said, and suddenly when I took off my shoes, I recognized that what I perceived as a situation was just a sanctuary. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm moving in a sanctuary. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. My God, anybody hear what I'm talking about this morning? Understand that you will live beyond the temporary inconvenience of the situations. The situation that you're dealing with right now will come to pass because God is a strategic God. And let me say this, God will take the storm you're in and in the storm you're in, blow a change in your life. And through the change that's going to happen in some of your lives from this word this morning, is going to come a new, fresh opportunity. Oh, God. What many of us need more than anything else, we need a fresh opportunity. We messed up some other things. And if we're not careful, we want to dwell on that. I, I messed up the opportunity God gave me a few years ago. I didn't handle right what God gave me five years ago or six months ago, man. And, and I just need a fresh opportunity. Then, then in the spirit, take off your shoes because the situation is a sanctuary. And as soon as you see it as a sanctuary, then you're going to do what Joshua did, fall down and begin to worship God in the middle of of your situation. Turn the situation into sanctuary. Pastor, how do I turn my situation into a sanctuary? By worshiping God in the middle of it. By worshiping God. What will God do in exchange for that? When you make a sanctuary out of a situation, then God gives you the strategy. See, strategy lets you know how to bring the thing down. Strategy lets you know how to work it. We hear a lot about, oh, I got, Lord, help me to work this out. Well, you've got to have a strategy to work it out. Lord, how am, I, how am I going to get a victory in my life? God said, I'm going to give you the strategy, but you've got to praise me in your situation. As you praise me in your situation, worship me in your situation, realize it's a holy place, then I'm going to give you the strategy that, 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 that you need. God, how, how am I going to be able to keep this marriage together? God said, I got a strategy, but it's going to take some worship of me. When God gives you a strategy, you can overcome anything. But God can't give you a strategy when you think it's your battle. Because the more that you think it's your battle then you're putting too much of yourself into the battle instead of into the presence of God. Seven times Joshua goes around the wall. They blow the trumpet and God says, shout. God said, get right in front of the wall and shout as if it's already down. I just told you a strategy. I just told you that's a strategy. Call on those things that are not as though they were is a work of supernatural faith that moves the hand of God. 
God moves against the walls when you operate in that strategy. What things that soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you've received them and you shall have them. That's a strategy. It's a strategy in prayer. Prayer is what moves the hand of God. Not good intentions, not your ideas, not your thoughts. Amen. Hey, get this. Don't think you're going to go through this thing with head power and sword power. Because you will never get it totally together until you add the faith part to the works part. Because as God said to Joshua, he said, as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. Joshua, I'm going to teach you to be strong at what Moses did. And when Joshua defeats Jericho, he'll be able to say, it wasn't my sword, it was my worship. And you're going to be able to start saying, it wasn't my efforts, my intellect, and all of my walking and all. No, it was my worship that brought it down. So that now your strategy for life is my worship. All of my ideas and thoughts and stuff that I need to get through it is in my worship. I finally learned what Moses was doing now. I understand what's going on up there on that mountain. I never could understand what's this guy, what, what man, what, what's my leader up here? Get down here in the battle, man. Would you come down in here and fight? I'm down here working this, fighting, working, fighting, working, and you're up there with just the hands up. But he found out it was through the worship that he was able to keep on fighting. Good God Almighty. And now he's beginning to pull it all together. Now I'm glad he kept his hands up. I would have been wiped out if he'd have, got, if he'd have kept his hands down. But it was through his worship. I learned that it is not what you do in public that matters. It's what you do in private that brings you the victory. By your hearts with me right now. Father, I thank you right now for supernatural provision. I thank you right now for walls that are coming down in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now for working on behalf of those that need you to work for them. God, whatever walls are up in front of your people that are keeping them from their healing, their deliverance, their their finances turning around, whatever, God. You know, there's just so many things we could say. We worship you. And we, 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 we take our shoes off so that we recognize that it's holy and we reverence who you are. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. With heads bowed for just a moment. How many in this house need to recognize your need of a Jesus? You need a Jesus in your life. You need a Savior. You need a supernatural helper. And you'd say, Pastor, pray for me. I need him in my life. I don't have him. He's not, he's not in me like he needs to be in me. Slip your hand up wherever you are in this house. Anybody? God bless you. I need the Lord Jesus in my life. Hallelujah. Everybody pray this out loud with me. Lord Jesus, I recognize I need you more than ever before. So come into my life.
take over my life. Let your blood cover me. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me completely. You're my Lord and Master. From this moment on, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want everybody for a moment to stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. I want anyone in this house that will be honest with me this morning. I don't want to miss anybody. And you'd say, I'm in a real battle. And I know this could be a general thing. I'm in a real battle, Pastor. I'm in a battle in my life. I'm just in a real tough place. I need, I need some walls to come down. I need some things to just shut down. Come down. Slip up your hand wherever you are. Amen. 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 I'm going to speak out of my spirit to you. And I'm going to speak. I, 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 I don't get this wrong. But I'm going to speak with my shoes off. Because it's not just something silly to do, but I'm recognizing I'm in a holy place on a holy ground and that through my praise, I'm going to pray in your direction. So in my worship, I'm going to pr worship and, and believe for you in your direction. So take somebody by the hand right now. This is, this is powerful. Come on, there's something in this right now. Father God, right now, whatever wall it is, whatever it is that is keeping me back, holding me back, stopping me in any way, I pray that it will come down in the name of Jesus. I bind the devil. I bind anything, everything that's causing me to miss it. Lord, give me the intelligence so that I'll know what I need to be doing to get my breakthrough that I'll find out where, where, where does my worship need to be. Let me find out where does my worship need to be. Right now, God, through that, I pray for walls to come down, victories to come. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I bind up the enemy and release. Amen. Victory. Release the anointing in this house. The battle is not yours, but God's. The battle is not yours, but God's. <laughs> Amen. Quit trying to wear yourself out getting the victory. The battle is not yours, but God's. Say that out loud. The battle is not mine, but God's. The battle is not mine, but God. The battle is not mine, but God's. Hallelujah. You believe that today? Say amen. Before you get out of this house this morning, look over at somebody. This is powerful. Just say, hey, the battle's not yours. It's God's. We love you. Be back in here on Wednesday night, church. The battle's not yours, but God. Amen and amen and amen. This is DJ Doc and this is the Believers Underground Radio. And you've just been listening to Pastor Mike Perkey, The Battle. Remember, if when we go into the war zone, take some prayer with you. God bless you and your family. And may a hedge be put around you. And devil, get thee behind me. Ha <laughs> ha. For we have power in the name of Jesus. Yes, we do. Until next time, peace. I'm out of here.